Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater, and today I thought it would be a great time to do an update on the greenhouse and also a great opportunity to show off the lights we have in the greenhouse. It is going to be the coldest night of the season so far tonight. It's going to drop down to 29 degrees at least. So I'm out here checking up on the temperatures of the ponds. I thought it'd be real cool to show you how far down the temperatures really get on these guys. And like I've mentioned before in our past videos, we don't do any heat, nothing at all like that. The greenhouse isn't, isn't even closed up all the way. So I'm just simply out here showing you guys how low the water temperatures get. I got a couple different buckets, so I thought I'd go to each different size uh, water volume and go through the different temperatures as well as like the surface temperature in the greenhouse. So let's get started. And of course, being how cold it is, it is just freezing out to us. It only gets about this cold three days out of the year in Florida. And thank you so much, Shelby, for holding the camera. But I had to do her justice and bring her inside as quickly as we got the film done and then do the voiceover inside because it would have just taken us way too long to get everything right. And we would have been little popsicles. So to start it off, the first pond, we have our golden back yellow 24 karat line neocaridinas these got us best of show in the last orlando american shrimp contest and these guys are clocking in at 45 degrees fahrenheit then we've got our smallest bucket of our wild neocaridinas in 43 to 44 degree water next up we got a small trash can of painted fire reds and they are reading 44 degrees fahrenheit just to show you how cold it really is outside, the top of the food can is reading at 37 degrees. And then we've got our blue diamonds kind of in the center of the greenhouse reading at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And then in the back of the greenhouse, we have our cut in half IBC totes, our orange Rileys or Rillies clocking in at 47 degrees. And then in the very back of the greenhouse, the barrel of green emeralds is at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And then this is our largest pond of shrimp, our green jades at 49 degrees Fahrenheit. I also thought maybe we'd check the temperatures of the ponds outside as well as maybe the pool temperature just for fun. And then stepping just outside the greenhouse, we got the blue dreams reading at 44 degrees. And then the pond, which is currently off, I'm just testing this out a little bit. However, it is at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we've got our pool, which is the only body of water that is in ground and at 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And then really quickly, I'd just like to go over the parameters and care of our Neocaridina ponds that we have outside. They all run at about 180 TDS, 7 GH, and 3 KH. This is all tap water with a little bit of shrimp prep added to take out that chlorine. Everything just runs off of sponge filters, no heaters in the winter, no chillers in the summer. I do not worry about temperatures at all. I still get buried in the winter time, just they do not hatch as fast, they do not grow nearly as quickly, they do not eat as much, they just kind of stay to themselves, they really just hide up underneath anything, like the sponge filters and plants especially. I think that they do this because of predators and whatnot, they don't want to waste any energy having to dart around or move around, they just kind of stay in one spot and just stay safe and try to keep as warm as possible. All right, so it's now Sunday morning. It's a bit chillier than last night. Of course, the ponds have been through a colder temperature throughout the night, so let's figure out how much exactly the temperatures have dropped. And uh, I'll turn off the pumps as well so we can get a little better look at the shrimp with the daylight. Start back off again. We are back at the Yellow Neocaridina pond where they have dropped down to 39 degrees. That is a six degree change. However, it is 9.30 already by the time we headed outside. It is just way too cold in the mornings and everybody knows how it is when you're cold. You just do not want to get out of bed. So we warmed up a little bit before we moseyed on outside and maybe the ponds had warmed up a little bit. I'm not sure, but it could be expected with the yellow pond because they are the very first pond to reach any sunlight during the day. And then back to the smallest can, we got the wilds. They had dropped down to 37 degrees. That's a seven degree difference. This can be expected because they have the smallest water volume in the greenhouse or any of our ponds outside for that matter. 
it will get the coldest out of all the ponds. Before it has dropped down to 34 degrees, I would not be uh, that surprised if it didn't reach that degree last night, just overnight when, uh, before we got outside to check the temperatures. And then the fire red cherries have also dropped down to 37 degrees. That is expected. The can is still small and not large enough water volume to hold any heat. And then the food can has gone up one degree to 38. I think that's just because the sun is out and is warming things up as we speak. And then the blue diamonds have dropped seven degrees as well. They are sitting at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They might have been in the 30s at the middle of the night or something like that, but everything's starting to warm up now. And now we're really starting to see a pattern here. Almost all of the tanks are dropped about seven or six degrees in temperature. So the orange lilies are no difference. They are down to 40 degrees. However, it is so cold outside, I forgot to record the temperature of the barrel. So yeah, just gonna use your imagination there. It might've dropped eight degrees, uh, but probably just dropped seven degrees like the rest. So I think it's safe to say it's probably at 40 degree temperature. And then the larger green jade tub dropped only six degrees down to 43 degrees because it is the largest volume of water that is to be expected. It can hold its heat a little bit better than the rest of the ponds. And then this is exactly why we record temperatures and go through everything and figure out what exactly happens in your tanks overnight during the extreme points in weather because this is where I got an only three degree temperature with my ponds outside. And the reason behind that is because everything is covered. So it really gives that greenhouse effect with the screen over the top, even though it's a fine mesh, it's still kept everything nice and humid and warmer inside the IBC totes outside of the greenhouse. This pond, there is no running water or anything like that. And we only had a one degree change down to 44 degrees. And then, surprisingly enough, the pool has dropped an entire two degrees down to 46. And a lot of that has to do with the waterfall effect just simply getting cold as the water trickles through the air. It drops in temperature a good significant amount before it hits the water and mixes in with the warmer pool water. So that right there is just cooling everything down a bit. You would think with the largest body of water, the most water volume, and it being buried in the ground, that it would hold its temperature a little bit better. So with this in mind, I'm thinking next year during the winter, I'm probably only going to do pumps that stay submerged entirely with no filtration or anything like that running above the ground level, just so I can keep my turtles and the koi as warm as possible. And of course, like I said, I go through, turn off all the pumps so that way we could see in the ponds a little better. However, this is more for myself. Since I broke my ankle, I really haven't been out here that much. Shelby's been feeding everything, catching all the shrimp, taking care of all the orders, doing all the culling and everything like that. So I haven't really seen anything out here for the most part other than the one water change I did and it was kind of cold. So I was in and out as fast as possible with my ankle being broken on top of it. I was just happier to be in bed with my ankle up. So I really haven't taken a look. So first go around, I saw some worms in the Riley tank and that's just kind of a big surprise. I've never seen those before. I wonder if because it's just so cold that they were seeking warmth and were able to climb up the sides, maybe when the moisture and everything like that, you get a little dew on the sides of the containers as well as the screens and the side um, plastic of the greenhouse. So they probably just climbed up in into the ponds and they only need a very minute amount of oxygen. So any of the air bubbles or anything like that that got trapped underneath the substrate or in the sponge filter itself, they're probably just surviving on that underneath water. And then sadly, it's just not Florida if we don't have some Cuban tree frogs running around. So of course, in my inspection, I found not one, but two Cuban tree frogs chilling out in the same IBC tote. After I saw those, I kind of was checking around, looking at some of the other IBC totes with the camera, because I can't really reach my head up underneath there and look around, but I didn't find anybody else. It makes sense that the frogs are using the little greenhouse chamber effects inside the IBC totes that I just don't fill them up all the way. So they just kind of got like a foot of room in there that they can hang out, but they are an invasive species. So I'm going to have to remove these and uh, kick them out, give them the eviction notice. All right, so I think that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys how hardy these creatures really are and that we really don't worry about temperatures at all. No heaters or anything like that. They just don't need it. 
And with that being said, I'd also like to say thank you to everybody who's watched our videos up to this point. We are now finally monetized, so from here on out, we'll be making a little money back off of these videos. And believe us, we're going to be putting that all back into the channel. So stay tuned, because everything from here on out, we're going to try and elevate your experience a little bit better. Shelby is getting way better at editing and everything like that. Thank you so much, Shelby, for putting together all the videos. Without you, none of this would be possible. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.